Yo, what's up, tech squad? It's your boy back at it again, diving deep into the wild world of smartphones. If you're like me and can't get enough of Samsung's Galaxy S series, buckle up, because today we're talking about something that's got me seriously hyped and a little skeptical too. We're breaking down the latest buzz on the Samsung Galaxy S26 series and this beast of a chip called the Exynos 2600. Is Samsung finally nailing their in-house chip game or is it another roller coaster? Let's jump right in. Hit that like button if you're excited and subscribe so you don't miss the drop. All right, the Galaxy S25 lineup just wrapped up, and yeah, they were solid, running all Snapdragon 8 Elite worldwide, no Exynos drama this time, but fast forward to early 2026, and Samsung's shaking things up again. Rumors say we're getting three big models, the Galaxy S26 Pro, the Galaxy S26 Edge, and of course, the Galaxy S26 Ultra. Launch is expected in January or February, with upgrades to cameras, batteries, and that classic Samsung polish. But here's the juicy part. Samsung might bring back their homegrown Exynos chip for some models. After going all Snapdragon last year, this feels like a comeback move. Why? Well, reports say Samsung's chips at cost jumps nearly 30% in early 2025. Switching to Exynos could save them money and boost their own semiconductor game. If they pull it off, it means tighter integration and maybe even better performance. But we all know Samsung's history with Exynos, hit or miss, sometimes with overheating issues. So yeah, cautious optimism here. Now let's talk about the star of the show the Exynos 2600. Reports from Korean outlets confirm that Samsung has finished development and is starting mass production by the end of this month. This is Samsung's first chip built on a two nanometer gate all around process. What does that mean? Smaller, faster, and more efficient than three nanometer chips. Basically think of it like swapping a standard car engine for a rocket booster. Executives at Samsung are already confident, saying the Exynos 2600 delivers way better performance than the Exynos 2500. It even comes with a new heat pass block solution to manage temperatures better during heavy use, like gaming or editing videos. No more overheating and throttling. That's the hope anyway. Let's get into the benchmarks. Early Geekbench scores for the Exynos 2600 show 3,309 single core and 11,256 multi-core. Compare that to the Snapdragon 8 Elite from the Galaxy S25, which scored around 2,900 single and 9,300 multi. That's a pretty impressive leap, about 13 to 17% faster. But here's the kicker. Qualcomm's upcoming Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is also on the way, and it scored 3393 single core and 11,515 multi core. So, yeah, Samsung's Exynos 2600 is basically neck and neck with Qualcomm's top chip. That's huge because for the first time in years, Exynos might actually be competitive. Real world use? That means smoother gameplay, better AI features, and improved efficiency for longer battery life. The chip has a 10-core CPU setup with one prime core at 3.8 GHz, three performance cores, and six efficiency cores. On paper, it looks strong, but we'll have to see how it handles graphics, modem performance, and thermals when the phones drop. So which models are getting Exynos and which stick with Snapdragon? Leaks suggest the Galaxy S26 Pro and S26 Edge will pack the Exynos 2600 in regions like Europe, Asia, Korea, and maybe China. The Galaxy S26 Ultra, on the other hand, will stay with Snapdragon 8 Elite worldwide. This is Samsung's dual-chip strategy all over again. Exynos for some markets, Snapdragon for others. Why keep Snapdragon for the Ultra? Probably to make sure the top-tier model avoids any risks and delivers the absolute best experience. If you're in the US, you'll almost definitely get Snapdragon no matter what. This isn't just about numbers, it's about the future of Samsung phones. If the Exynos 2600 lives up to the hype, Samsung proves it can compete with TSMC and Qualcomm on cutting-edge tech. That could lead to better phones, lower costs, and even more control over their ecosystem. It might even make Samsung a stronger player in the global chip market. But if yields are bad or performance lags, it could backfire. Still, early chatter from insiders and leakers is super positive. People are hyped about Samsung finally delivering a real Exynos comeback story. So that's the breakdown, the Galaxy S26 lineup, the Exynos 2600, and what it could mean for Samsung's future. Honestly, I'm excited. This could be the year Exynos goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Snapdragon and actually wins in some areas. But I want to hear from you. Are you Team Exynos for the innovation and potential savings, or Team Snapdragon for reliability and consistency? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, smash that like button if you're hyped for next year's flagships, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the drop. Thanks for watching Tech Squad, I'll catch you in the next one, peace.